Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. In today's video, we discuss stocks, commodities, and crypto markets right now. And specifically, we want to talk about crypto and stocks. Why? Bitcoin's made a new low, and at the same time, stock markets have turned defensive. Let's take a look underneath the hood and especially have a look at some of the individual stocks that are making new lows. Is that something that we should be concerned about? Stay tuned. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show where we talk about markets around the world. We'll start off with the macro data, the lead indicators, and then of course the key levels you should be watching right now. The US Treasury yield curve is now more than 70% inverted. This is when we get all of the yields together and we basically mix match them and find out whether the entire yield curve inversions are correct. Now, in 50 years of history, this has been incredibly accurate in comparison to other yield curve indicators, and it's one of the favorites of the channel here that we talk about. Now, if you have a look, we're at 75%. What does that mean? Well, if we go over here and we talk about how recessions end up coming through, there is a point to this. It's not just so much that recessions or the word recession means much. It just shows us a timeline potentially for recoveries actually in stock markets. So inverted yield curves, they usually start with something like the US 02Y versus the US 10-year, the traditional yield curve inversion. And then about 15, that usually happens around 15 months before the recession is officially called. Now think about unemployment. What did we see in the last figures? It started to rise. Housing starts, definitely not doing so well. Leading economic index, also not doing so well. We're getting closer and closer and closer to that official recession figure. And when that happens, the interesting thing about stock markets is they tend to be in recovery already. Yes, that's right. By the time the recession has been called officially, the markets have already started the recovery. So the worst is often over at that period. It may not be this time around, but it's something to keep in the back of our minds. The worst US home buying conditions in history. Take a look at this chart. Not even during the GFC did we see such bad buying house indicators. Yes, unfortunately, houses are most likely going to be coming down due to high interest rates. And it just shows you that again, if that market's squeezing, it often has a hit pocket expense, which kills demand, which again feeds into the Fed's narrative of demand destruction and potentially weaker consumer discretionary stocks, which when we look at our lead indicator for that later on today's show will make perfect sense. The holidays are coming though. Does that give us any cheer? Well, traditionally, yes. Holiday periods do usually have a slightly more positive attitude. However, the Mondays and Tuesdays, which of course is where we're at right now, do tend to be potentially that negative kind of connotation with markets. Cumulative percentage of Dow during three trading days before each holiday, we end up getting a positive run throughout history. We'll have more on this later in the next session or the next video that we make here on the channel. But I want to bring ourselves to this particular chart or this particular stock, and that's Tesla. It's a big stock, as we know. It's falling through the floor. It's down 44% this year so far. It's fallen another six and a bit percent as of the recording of the past session. And as we know, some of the biggest gains in the percentages of Tesla came recently, 743% in 2020. It's starting to give up a huge portion of that. What does this mean or what does this bring in store for Tesla moving forward? Let's take a look at the charts very, very soon. And it, it is a little bit scary. If you haven't been following at FX Evolution, at FX Evolution, spelled correctly if possible, because uh, there are a few imposters out there, unfortunately, then do so because we will be releasing a bunch of reports. Uh, reports like this will be coming to our Twitter feed and we'll be posting those. They're usually from our private community. But if you're interested in getting access to one of those, why not give us a free follow? Hey, doesn't cost you anything. Let's move over here to the defensive attitudes of the market. This was the last 24 hours in the market. What do we notice up top? XLPs up here, utilities are up here. The only positive sectors were mostly defensives, mostly things to do with anything to do with metals or potentially a commodity of some kind. Obviously, we didn't have good days for semiconductors. That continues the weakness that we've seen in markets. And here's the five-day trail. So again, staples, utilities, healthcare. It's three of the main ones that you always need to see. Now, funnily enough, even though real estate looks pretty bad, this is actually a seasonality period for XLRE. I'm not particularly fussed on it, but that's certainly something that a lot of people do pay attention to right now. 
Let's move over to the VIX. The VIX is at 22. So even though the markets are looking a little bit shambly, the VIX is coming down. Is that in line with what we've seen before? Well, of course, one of our case scenarios, one of the thought processes at the moment is that we see weakness in something like the VIX. The VIX comes back down to a 20. And if we take that correlation, remember over here, there was no more than really 35 on the VIX, similar to 2022. That's potentially where we get the calm before the storm and we get that huge bounce. So that's the correlation with the VIX from 2008 to now. Now, does that make sense with puts and calls out there? Well, one thing that's interesting is we keep getting a lot of calls being added into the market. Clearly, sentiment has shifted partially. Calls coming in, put call ratio dropping, which is telling us that we're getting a little bit of additional calls coming in. As we know, when we tend to be down in these bottom end areas, there's a chance that we might be near the peak as we have seen a few times in 2022. So call put call ratio remains down here and we keep going sideways. Again, that could be a good trap. We'll be looking at options. Options pay, pay a lot of attention to them at the moment. It's a clear way of manipulating the market to make the most amount of premium possible. And who wants to do that? Yeah, it's Wall Street. Let's take a look at now at yields. Yields were on the rise again, falling the market. And this is an interesting one because some people are saying, hey, looks like a head and shoulders. Well, we can set alerts and I think it'd be worthwhile understanding if yield gets underneath this 4.2% here. Here's the government or here's the two year bond yield. Let's take a look at the 10 year. Again, you can see here the 10 year rising slightly, but what's more interesting has to be the forward yields. If we go here to April of 2023, 5% Fed terminal rate and 5% Fed terminal rate now all the way to September with only one rate cut expected. This is where the big change has happened, December 2023. It now looks like this with one rate cut at the end of 23. That's a big difference to where we were a week ago and the market's starting to correlate to that. Can you believe that even though the market's still higher because of the inflation numbers coming down, yield curving is almost exactly where it was before that inflation number. Let's take a look at bonds, high yield bonds doing absolutely nothing. The only bond market looking really good has to be the corporate grade bonds. Corporate grades have been doing well in recent weeks, but again, another red day here for them. So if we continue to see red and sideways market, watch out down below because yeah, if bonds start dropping off again, especially corp grades or high yields, we have to be paying attention. At this stage, the market rally has seemed legit. Was it all still false though? We'll find out from the bond market. Watch LQD, watch HYG. They're both good to have in your charts. So a long-term suspicion that we've had, which has been, of course, the US dollar strength happened and it broke through in a big way. It just went bam, straight through the top. Then it's rallied all the way back into that kind of 108 level. Let's have a look at the smaller timeframes here to just understand what it's moved into. So there's a little bit of structure over here, effectively some supply. We've entered into a holding pattern ahead of that. Now, this can often be a bullish signal for stocks if we do end up getting a breakout towards the upside. The reason why is if we sit just before where you expect the take profit target to be for buyers initially, which is around that 108, kind of 10, 20 area, then it can sit and then explodes out to break that level. And then of course, over move up and further. Now, if that's what ends up happening here with the DXY and it ends up taking off all of this, then of course this was CPI. So we would expect the stock market to fall in accordance, pushing back to one of our case scenarios. For now though, it looks like the dollar index is relatively strong. I wouldn't really want it under 107.5, at least initially. Uh, the way I would see it is if we set an alert for around that level there, if the market now takes this zone, it's probably gonna do this and then potentially find buyers. So just be careful about that. That's the way I would think it plays out should it make a new low underneath this previous one right here. Let's move over to the Euro, similar thing. Euro is coming into a potential demand. It has started to, let's say consolidate before that. We haven't seen it touch this area yet. I'd still like it to do this and then potentially move and then maybe move down later on. But at this point, yeah, the Euro is just floating. Remember, use the DXY and the Euro together. They tend to synergize incredibly well. So strong dollar, what has that meant for some commodities? Well, gold has reduced. Gold's gone down. And this is really in line with exactly what we were hoping for. 
gold coming back after a stellar move in the last couple of weeks. Where is the first level? Well, I've got an alert sitting at 1720 just to basically begin this box area. And I'm really looking for the market to come back down to around a 1710, 1707. These two boxes here, these green ones, are where we should find ideally some gold buyers to come back in. This has been a fairly decent sell-off. It's been in line with our GDX thought processes. So if we load up GDX, this is the gold miner stocks you can see here. Again, we've seen some weakness come out of those. We've seen this island reversal. And at this stage, it looks like we could be seeing further weakness in gold, followed by ideally strength in the metal a little bit later on. US oil was really bad for part of the session. It's tapped into our previous 75 demands and it made a new low and then it is rejected massively. This was a big switch. So let's just have a quick look here at what the barrels did. They dropped off about five, 6%, then put it all back on. And now they've made a new little high above here. Now, originally I wanted it to get above 82. This is a very interesting switch. It only just got above. So let's just quickly scroll down here to the one hour. It only just spiked above. I'd like to see oil do something like this, but this was, I mean, what buying, yeah? What a switch. If we then consider that, this seems like a likely scenario. Maybe that was a little bit of a low here in oil for now. Take a look at this daily. Huge rejection wick. That's a massive hammer. So that is a massive hammer. So we could see something like this occur and it wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Remember, it is coming off a previous low. So this was always one of our favorite levels. We didn't get it the first time, as in it didn't quite come in and then it bounced off. Now we've had this area touched. My two favorites have always been 64, 65, and this 75 zone right here with the structure. Very interesting actions coming out of the markets. Does this mean that maybe stocks will recover a little bit into Thanksgiving? Yeah, well, possibly. Probably not this one though. Uh, yeah, Tesla's bad, guys. This is not what you wanted to see. We saw the weakness. We've had days and days and days of weakness without even the stock market being that weak. And then it all happened on the Monday session. The markets fell to 167. That's 6.84%. I don't like what we're seeing on this stock. I've thought about this for a little while. And I still think that there's a real possibility of this 136, 123 area being reached by Tesla. The problem is, is that it's just continuously found weakness while the stock market has been, let's call it flat or just slightly down. You'll notice that it's come out pretty aggressively. It could rally up. This reminds me a lot of AMD. And what I mean by that is when AMD broke. So I'll just show everybody a very similar scenario because as a trader or an investor, you always wanna be thinking about very similar scenarios. Here, AMD had a rise. It was a massive one and it went really, really big rally. It then found huge buying pressure around 72. It then fell through. Now, while it did find some rallies through this, it ended up falling into that zone. Does that look familiar? Very quick rally, a nice structure underneath. Let's have a look at Tesla again. A very quick rally, as you'll see in a second, a nice structure underneath. So I really do favor probably the bearish side here for Tesla. I think that a lot of investors are getting very scared about Elon and the whole Twitter thing. We all know about all these stuff. stuff. I don't really want to speculate on it. What instead I'm going to say is that the market is proving that point and that there is still percentage chance of further downside. Let's have a look at the percentage actually, what would happen. It's around a 20% decline just down to the 136. Will it happen? Well, time will tell. Semiconductors also finding some weakness here, guys. We had the island reversal, the rejection here. It was one of the worst sectors of the day. It, if the markets do end up going down, semis should be the one that leads it. Let's have a look at Apple, another chart that doesn't really look that positive on the next couple of sessions. We get that high here, we get some structure, we get a low, we've rallied. Will we now fall over? Kind of like a doubling top strategy. Let's set an alert underneath this level. It'll be important. That's a 146-ish zone for anyone that's in the car. A few of you guys are, I know. You've messaged me about it. And if we do end up making a new low, we've got to pay attention to Apple. Tesla's made a new low. Apple's made a new low. The market then would be going already in defensive mode. So it's already stacked a whole bunch of utilities and staples. That's not what we want to see in these markets right now if you're a bull. XLY, XLP, this is consumer discretionary versus staples. Again, not very positive 
for the market. Consumer discretionary, yes, Amazon and Tesla are big parts of it, just declining pretty heavily. And this is, again, the third of the US economy, the American consumer. Usually you're seeing this rally if the bottoms are in for markets. That tends to be one of the best sectors. Also, we're seeing the Dow versus the US 500. I like to call it the old economy versus the new economy rising over the last couple of sessions. Again, that's not really that positive with theoretically a recovery in the markets. A lot of you want to short the DAX. I've seen this comment a lot. I'm not sure where the DAX exactly shorts. I've got an alert setting here for the low. Obviously, we saw some weakness in these candles. We've still got this supply up here. News coming out, we'll see shortly for the Eurozone. And this level is going to be critical. So certainly be paying attention to that on the charts. Let's move over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ found weakness. It didn't quite find a new low. Now you can see that the NASDAQ has been making realistically a series of kind of lower highs throughout. This is time for the bears to take control if they're going to. We want to see pushdowns, new lows, and then potentially a switch into maybe that 11,000, 10,800 where we were before the CPI number. If bulls are going to contain it, it needs to happen pretty much right now. So really things like the NASDAQ, they came off that perfect level of that 12,000 supply. We've seen weakness. Will it continue? Let's move over to the stock market. There are cases to be made for why this market could go down. I just want to point out that if we took FIBs, uh, in fact, what we'll do is we'll just use this FIB. And if you think about it, FIBs here, this year, especially around that 61.8, has often been marking the swing move. So if we take the swing here, if we take the swing here, we've often seen that kind of round 61.8 area being the top. Again, at this current point in time, the current video, we've seen the 61.8 hit. We could still come into this downward trend line, which has been incredibly solid. Of course, one, two, will it be three question mark if it does get up there? And we have to be open to both sides. Although the markets are just kind of chopping around, we have to be open to the idea of a 3750 or a 4110. Be flexible, have the patience to react not pre and predict in terms of the markets. We don't wanna be predicting, but when we see these areas, we need to be able to say, okay, we're clear of mind. We don't have the bias on it. Let's move over here to the US 500. What's going on? Again, the rejection here on Friday was much in line with what we thought. The rejection in the last 24 hours was, again, what we thought. New low was formed underneath these two lows, but it didn't continue on. I'd like to see the next 24 hours show significant weakness if the bears are in control. Otherwise, we start making highs. We start getting through this unfilled gap left from the Friday. We start moving through this 39, kind of 90 or 4,000 level. I think we have to relegate that we're probably going towards the 40 one ten forty one twenty area. So some key zones for you: four thousand to let's say four twenty would be a pretty key zone. We want to have the probably around the thirty nine twenty getting taken out to just show us and solidify a potential new low forming. And then thirty seven fifty is where most of the stacked longs would be. That's where the inflation number came out, and you can see here we have close levels. We have unfilled gaps. We have all sorts of things sitting around this 3750 zone. So I really favor that from the bears, but it's only if the bears are able to get it back to new lows. We have to break this demand. We have to break this previous resistance becoming support level. This is all very important. A lot of bulls will be trying to buy right in here between the 3900 and the 3920. That's where they will try to load up if they're able to do so. Let's move over to options. Does that agree? Well, options calls are starting to come in. 410 and 400 are now the call strikes for the Friday. Of course, we're less than a million units. This is much smaller than a normal options expiration, so we won't go too much into that. We'll move over to Bitcoin, the big elephant in the room right now. Again, this is just our work talking about it. We generally expect somewhere around, on average, because we know this was from top to basically the low around 420 days, we expect Bitcoin to potentially make its low before February of 2023. Now, if we take previous percentages, negative 86, negative 84, that brings us to an 11 and a half thousand to potentially 9,000 kind of zone, 9,500 actually. These two levels or that structure could be the low for Bitcoin. If we have a look out here, I've got it marked up. Nice structure in the past, a great level. Will it be happening? 
Well, at the time of recording, we made a new low. We actually got underneath 15,600-ish. This still could be bullish for Bitcoin, but it has to break some levels. Notice I've got it set to a break of 16.8. If I was a bull buyer, I'd also like to see it take now 16.4 because what it's done is it's gone down, it's structured here, it's broken a new low. New lows in Bitcoin, if they are rejected heavily, do tend to be really nice maximum pain kind of flush outs for the crypto market. I'm sure a lot of people are discussing this point right now. Case in point, new low was formed here. Case in point, we ended up not getting a new low formed in, um, on this one, and it didn't end up being the bottoming of the market. Let's have a look at the daily here and look at some of the previous periods. Again, there's the new low that wipes these guys. There's the new low that wipes these guys. And in this one, we have a low here that wipes these previous purchases. So be wary of the crypto market. If it does rally, you can pay some real attention to it. At this stage though, it's mostly negative on this market. If it keeps drooping and dropping down, this is going to be potentially contagious to other markets such as even stocks out there. If you haven't already been looking at the calendar, be aware that we have the FOMC meeting minutes on Wednesday. This is coming out 2 p.m. New York time, certainly something we're looking at. And of course, if you're interested as well, we've got our Black Friday sale on our courses. Links in the description down below. You can check out any one of our courses. If you're interested in the scalping component, it's about a day left. Popular demand, we left it open for a little bit longer. A lot of emails coming in from you guys. So definitely check that one out. If you enjoyed the content for today, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and we'll see you in another video very soon. Bye for now.